Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be building the Mini Owl brushless micro quadcopter from FlexRC.com. I have used a couple of extra products to get this thing flying so I will link those in the description. Let's get cracking with the build. So starting off with the bottom plate and I'm going to take one of the motors and screw it into the frame so that it is in a pusher configuration. I'm just using two screws there. You only need two and there's no need to use thread lock. You can use thread lock but I tend to find there's not enough vibration going on there for anything to come loose. So I'm just speeding the rest of that up to put all the motors in. Okay, that's all the motors in. The next thing to do is start putting the standoff screws in. I'm taking a nylon nut and that is going to act as a spacer so that the ESC board can sit on top of that and not rest against the carbon fibre. And also the motor wires can neatly tuck underneath there as well. Now you don't get these in the kit. I have bought these separate off eBay. They're very cheap. You can also see that the standoffs go in at a diagonal angle and this will be corrected in clean flight later. So I have skipped a few and this is the last standoff going in. Next I'm cutting the motor wire shorter just so that it leaves enough of the metal wire to solder to the ESC board. Now I am arranging the motor wires so that they can be soldered in the correct position on the ESC board. Very fiddly this, but it means that we have a nice neat job at the end of it. So I'm just raveling this wire around the standoff and that's going to sit underneath snug. I will explain the motor positions later but for now I'm just organizing the wires. I've forgotten to cut that one short, so I'm going to do that. It's a very fiddly job this, it's a very small frame. And this is the last motor wire that I'm holding in position. And then I'm going to grab the ESC board and fit it over the top so that I can tin it. just ensuring that all the wires are in place. I should say at this point if you don't have a thin velcro strap it's worth putting your velcro strap on now. But I'm fitting the ESC board there in its position. Now I'm going to tin up all the solder pads. This is where the battery connects. I'm going to speed that up. And now I'm tinning all the motor wires up. Okay, now I'm going to start to solder the motors. So this is motor one that I'm starting with. 
Now, at this point, it's pretty much impossible to know the motor direction, so I'm just soldering them all up. And once I've installed Clean Flight, then we can change the direction. So this is for motor one, and I'll put a circle around motor one so you know which one it is. This next one is motor four. And again, this is for the pusher configuration. So this is motor 3 that's going in. You can see that the wires are a little bit messy, but we will tidy that up later. And this is motor 2 going in. And that's all the motors soldered to the ESE board. Next, I'm going to solder on the positive side of the JST connector. This is where the battery is going to connect. And as there is no power distribution board, because there's no room, I'm going to create a tower of positive leads. So this is going to be for powering up the flight controller, the positive lead. This one is going to be for the VBAT, which sends the battery voltage telemetry to the flight controller, which in turn sends it to the on-screen display. And then finally, this is the power cable to the VTX. And that mounts on top of each other quite nicely and very strong. So now I need to do the same for the negative side. So this is the JST connector. And again, the negative wire, which will go to the flight controller to power it. And the VBAT. And lastly, the power connector to the VTX. And that all piles on top of each other quite nicely. So next I'm taking two pins out of the flight controller pack that you get. And I'm going to solder those in on the plus and minus. And this is going to be where our 5 volt regulator powers the flight controller. I have bridged it slightly there, so just a dab of the soldering iron will unbridge it. So this is the 5 volt regulator. I slide that over the top of the two pins and then solder those in. It doesn't actually touch the bottom underneath. However, you can add some protection, perhaps some electrical tape. I didn't find that necessary. So then, this is the plug that comes with the ESC board. And I'm just going to measure that up and cut it off, because these are the PWM signals into the flight controller. Just using a pin to remove the red wire, we do not need that.
So the white cable is the PWM1. The green goes into PWM2. The blue into PWM3 and the yellow into PWM4. Next I'm going to disassemble the Lemon RX satellite receiver. Just take that screw out there and it comes apart. Then this is the plug that you get with the receiver. Just going to cut that short and that's going to sit on top of the flight controller. Or should I say underneath the flight controller as we're mounting it inverted. So I've stripped those wires and now I'm measuring a length of double sided sticky tape. And I'm just peeling back one side for now. And that is where it's going to stick on to the flight controller. Gives it a much lower profile. So I'm now going to tin up on the UART3 where the satellite receiver connects. So we have signal, ground, and then this is the 3.3 volts pad because that is what is required to power the RX. Don't connect it to the 5 volt pad on the UART3. So that was the signal. I think this is the ground. And the last one, the 3.3 volts. That is a close up of it. So you can see RX there, the minus, and the 3.3 volts. I'm now taking some longer standoffs and screwing them on, and the flight controller can sit on top of those. Now I'm going to plug in the flight controller. It's a really nice, neat job. And then this is one of the voltage pins coming from the ESC board, and that is going to power the 5 volt regulator. So that is the plus, and this is the minus. And this is the other lead for the VBAT, so the telemetry wire. and the negative for the telemetry. Okay, I'm going to make sure that that all fits on the top there. In my Tyrannus I've got the model name as Owl Mini. And if we page over I've got the model image to TBS Discovery. I have got the external RF selected as PPM, channels 1 to 8. I've got the fail-safe mode set to receiver. And if I page over to the input tab, I have got my switch SG set to the flight mode. And I've got SF set to arm. And the same in the mix tab. And if I page over here to the outputs, I've got channel 5 reversed for my mode switch. And that is pretty much everything. It's really easy to set up. And then into clean flight, and I'm going to flash the board. Make sure that the board rate is set to this figure. We click the load firmware, and this is the Better Flight version 2.81 for the SP Racing board. You want to click open there, but I've already loaded this on there, so I can press cancel. And now I'm going to press connect. And here you can calibrate your accelerometer if you like. The quadcopter's upside down at the moment, so that's why it's showing that way. But in the ports, we need to make sure that UART1 is selected and UART2 is selected for our telemetry. And then Serial RX is selected on the UART3 and save and reboot there. So we've got quadcopter X selected there. And we've got motor stop engaged, one shot, 125, and the disarm button. And these for now are the minimum values. I do change those in a bit. We need to have the VBAT selected for the telemetry. 
And then you'll notice over here, I have got the yaw set to 45 degrees. And that's going to change the orientation of the board. I want to make sure that Serial RX is selected. I'm just going to scroll down here and make sure that Spectrum 2048 is selected if you're using a DSMX receiver like I am. I'm going to scroll down a bit more and we have telemetry enabled to make sure that it sends it to the OSD. The failsafe I've kept as standard, the figure is 885. Under PID tuning I'm using Lux Float for now, but I do change that to rewrite. These are all my rate settings. For the receiver, we've got TAER1234 selected, and here are my settings for the rates. Under modes, I've got arms selected on a switch, auxiliary 2, and then auxiliary 1, I've got angle mode set up on a three position switch, horizon on the second, and then acro or rate mode on the third, but I change that, I add air mode in a minute. So to bind the DSM satellite, you have to put in this command here, set spectrum, sat to bind equals seven, press enter on there, and of course you need to save and reboot, and then disconnect everything and bind your transmitter to it. So I'm using the Tyrannis with the Orange RX module, and then reconnect, and you will have a bind. For the motors, you want to calibrate the ESC, so press this button here, and then put the throttle up to maximum, plug your battery in, and then when you get the magic beep so that it is calibrating the ESCs, you can then drop the master lever there, and it will calibrate the ESCs then, disconnect your battery. Going back to the modes here, you can see that I've added air mode, which comes on at the same time as the quadcopter is armed. You get a much nicer feeling and flight using air mode, I find, when you come completely off the throttle, you get nice characteristics. Into the configuration, I've turned the motor stop off so that when it is on, the motors engage just like my mini quad. And I have changed the minimum throttle settings there as well. So this is the motor direction. If you are unsure, you can get this on FlexRC's website. And you can see there that the red is the pusher motor number and the green is the puller, and this is the motor direction. So when the quad is facing the right way up, this is the direction that the motor should turn in. Okay, so I have now spooled up my motors and I need to switch a couple over. I can't really see any other way of doing that. So just look at that diagram and make sure that your motors are turning in the right direction. And then just switch any two wires on the motors that aren't and that is what I have done here. It's very easy. So onto the on-screen display. This is the Micro Minim OSD. So I'm installing those pins there that come with this OSD. Just gonna tag the two sides there. And this is very similar to my alien build from this point. So I'm going to solder all those pins up. And that is so the FTDI adapter can connect to it. Also going to turn the other pads. Not going to be using the voltage in pad there, but I turned it anyway. So now I'm going to connect the FTDI adapter up to it. It will only fit one way in this configuration and then plug the USB cable into the computer and we need to go onto the computer to program it. So we need multi-Wii on-screen display and Arduino 1.05 installed. So I'm going to click multi-Wii on-screen display and that's going to open Arduino. Go into tools and we need to set up the board to the ATmega328. The programmer needs to be the Mark II and the serial port minus COM3. Now I'm not going to change any settings here, but if you do need to change any, they are all in config H. So make sure that we've got clean flight selected and rotorcraft, but this was all selected as default anyway. So then I can press upload. 
and this will take a bit of time so I've moved it on it says done uploading so I can close that down now and then go into the multi -Wii OSD GUI I'm on Windows so I'm using that version okay the first thing I need to do is connect to it using COM3 and you'll see the on-screen display populate there to the right I'm now going to load the default fonts so just select that and then open we'll get a OK screen and then upload and that will upload the fonts there and it will stop flashing when it's done now I'm going to load a pre-programmed file that I've already done just to show you it's quicker so that is going to load you can see there that I've only got two things selected the top one is the display voltage of course and use the flight controller as main voltage I've got the voltage adjust here and it sets three cells and the voltage alarm I've set really low we've got NTSC selected for the camera and display timer that just gives me these two options here I don't like a cluttered on-screen display so I'm gonna write that to the board and then close the comms and we are done programming take the FTDI adapter out of the computer so I have clipped those pins off because we don't need them make sure that you have got everything you wanted there otherwise you can't change anything afterwards and this is the lead that comes with the flight controller I believe it's called a Pico connector it's a four pin connector and I'm just tinning those wires up and that is going to send the telemetry from the flight controller to the on-screen display so this is the power connector this is for the 5 volts from the flight controller it's going to power the on-screen display up and then this is the negative wire I've cut those pins off there just so we have a lower profile this is the TX and RX pins and this is going to connect into the UR2 connector on the flight controller next this is the ground from the camera this is the little cheap Banggood camera that you can get and this is the video in and then from the other side this is the cable that you get with the VTX it's the Hawkeye VTX that's the ground and video out to the VTX and then I'm connecting the positive cable and that's going to power the camera I have removed the two audio leads from the VTX cable using a pin I've also removed the audio lead from the camera as well Then I'm just using a candle lighter and a bit of heat shrink to seal that I'm gonna tidy up all the wires a little bit this is the bit I was dreading doing just pushing all the wires in I've also tidied up that on-screen display as well I have put some heat shrink over it to give it a lower profile so just tidying all the wires up there making sure nothing's going to get in the way of the props and this is where I plug in the on-screen display to the UART2 and you can see there the heat shrink over the on-screen display and I'm going to put that underneath the flight controller so that it's tucked away it's very tight to get all the wires in but it is possible so I'm putting the nylon screws on the top of the flight controller of course it's upside down in this configuration at the moment and then I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to glue in the camera and I'm putting a slight angle on it so that when it is in forward flight we are not looking at the ground all the time Then I'm just going to add a bit of support down the side with some hot glue and then that is not going to go anywhere this is the VTX I've tied it up a little bit I've put some heat shrink around it and that is going to face downwards and this is the connector to power the camera and this is the power to power the VTX 
It's going to put a little washer over the top of that, and that's going to face downwards. And this VTX fits nicely in the slot there. That is the screw over the top. Of course, you want to use a socket to tighten that up. Just hand tightening it for now. Now I'm pushing some of the cables inside so that they don't hit the props. Just moving some of the hot glue away. And now I'm putting the aluminium standoffs in. Just push the screws through the other side and hand tighten them and then screw tighten them afterwards. Okay, that's all of those in. So this is the prop cutting tool. So I have put a drill bit through it. And the idea is that this screws on to the end of a Dremel tool. So this is a Dremel tool. If you don't have one of these, you can quite effectively cut the props with just some wire cutters. I had no problems with that. You can see there, this device does screw on the Dremel. My Dremel is quite blunt, so it didn't do the best job. But this is the idea anyway. So these props here, they fit onto each other to create a four leaf and the idea is that we swing it around while the Dremel is moving So you can see there my Dremel not doing a great job, but we can use some wire cutters to clean that up. And you are then guaranteed the props being the same size each side. But these props are that tiny anyway, it's pretty hard to have them unbalanced. See a very rough cut there. And then I'm taking some wire cutters and just cleaning them up. You can also use a file as well to smooth them off if you like. So I need to put the props on, so I actually turn the quadcopter the right way up because the props are going to loop the same as if they were on a normal quadcopter. So I just put one on to get the direction right and then I can put the rest on so they just slot on the motor shaft there and then you have to line them up and then you only get enough screws to put two screws in for each prop so if you want four in then you're gonna have to buy some more props but I found that two were fine I had no problems with the props coming off then you use an allen key to put those in and then all the screws then go in for the top plate and I put the battery strap on there and that just times up and just cut it to length. And that completes the build. So that is everything. You can add an 80816 camera to the top if you wish. I have attached mine on the battery here. I have also added a low profile cloverleaf antenna that I got off Banggood. It just keeps the weight distribution more even. Many thanks to Dimitri from flexrc.com for all the help that he gave me with this build. I hope it's going to help you to build your version of it. You can follow me on Instagram at andyrc underscore channel for more items that are going to be coming up on the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.